Yo, John Bender, here to try and give a quick and painless tutorial of my latest Max for Live device proper loop. We'll start off with an empty device. The first thing you're going to see is a choice of 1 through 5 or 6 through 10. For each of these choices, you get your loops view and you get your mixer view. We'll get into the mixer view in a little bit. So to load our loops, all we have to do is drag and drop to any of the slots. You can then preview the loop with this toggle here. As you can hear, it's way too fast. By using this drop down menu, we can adjust the playback speed. This is relative to the original bar length of the original loop. However, you can use different settings to get really weird shifting and time stretching going on with the actual loop. You can also enable actual time stretching, which maintains the original pitch and harmonic data while locking to the transport tempo. You can also tune by semitone. Now we'll look at our mixer view. This is a way that you can adjust all the levels of all the loops you load so that they all sit well together. The effects preview routing allows us to route to any of the four effects chains. We'll go ahead and route to one. Now these these are for preview purposes only, so when we press play, this, these will all actually be overridden by sequencer controls. We'll get into that later, but for right now we can go over the different effects we have available to us. Four effects chains. We'll look at the first effects chain first, even though they're all the same. First thing we have is a bit crusher. Then have a drive and distortion unit. We have a stutter effect. The stutter effect is a little different. When the transport is running, there's a probability setting that will decide whether or not a trigger will trigger the stutter. So if we have that set to 50%, there's a 50-50 chance that a stutter will actually occur on any half note. The duration is the length of the stutter, and the speeds are the actual how fast the stutter happens. Like that was probably a 132nd or 116th note stutter. We also have a filter with cutoff and resonance. There's high pass, band passes, and notch, as well as low pass. And we have an LFO for that filter. LFO is automatically synced to tempo. We have a comb filter, which is really good for making glitched up sounds. Especially when you activate the left and right pitch LFOs. We have a delay that can run free or sync to tempo. We have a reverb to add some nice ambiance. Ambiance. And that's pretty much it for the effects section. So during previewing, you can route to any of the four effects sections. Get all your effects set up before you actually start sequencing. So now we can get into our sequencer section. As you can see, I have a proper loop with all 10 loops filled. First thing you're going to see is this tab selection. This is how you launch your different sequences. You can have up to 16 sequences, all with independent settings. If we go ahead and press play, we can hear our first sequence. If we enable edit mode, this allows us to go to other sequences while the original sequence continues to play. And if we disable edit mode, we bounce back to the playing sequence. You also have a kill, 
which stops the sequences. You have MIDI note triggers, which you can control launching of sequences from a MIDI controller keyboard, or you can draw clips into Ableton within the note range provided. You have a mapping mode. Any of these buttons can be mapped to your favorite controller. You have a song mode. Song mode allows you to basically sequence your sequencers, enable or disable. You also have various bar lengths, playback direction of the sequence. You can have up to 64 steps and you can sequence anywhere from 1 to 16 sequences and you can randomize. The way this works, basically, if a square in the grid is white, it's going to allow audio pass-through of a loop. You can determine which loop will pass through by using each of the row's loop settings. So you can allow or target any of the 10 loops that you have loaded at any given time. You also have the ability to mute each row. You also have independent effects routings for each sequence. So you can see only four effect sections, but it becomes very versatile when each sequence can have its own effects routing. You then have a choice between steps or layered mode. Layered mode allows you to have audio pass through from multiple loops at the same time, where steps only allows one at a time. You then have typical playback directions, step lengths, number of step choices are 8 steps, 16 steps, or 32 steps. You can change the number of rows in the grid. The number of loops is basically the number of loops you have loaded. This is for the randomization setting. If we set this to 10 and then randomize our loop here, you'll see they will randomize anywhere between 1 through 10 without repeating. Same goes for the effects. If we set this to 4 and hit random, no repeating. You may want repeating in certain uh, instances, and that's fine, you can do that. And that's pretty much how the sequencer section works. Last but not least, we have our random all section. This allows us to randomize target parameters of all 16 sequences with single button presses. We can randomize the number of steps, step length, whether it's steps or layered mode, direction, the sequences, the number of rows, I'm going to skip that, target loops, and once again this is dependent on setting this to however many loops you have loaded, and then you have your number of effects. So that's about it. That's a uh, pretty thorough walkthrough of Proper Loop. Hopefully you guys enjoy it and have fun with it and create something amazing.